Hello everyone, um, we are here again uh, with Mitsubi Selective Podcast. Uh, this time um, we will be starting conversations around sustainable societies. And the first topic that I, we will do is water. So today I have Alessandra with me, who is an expert in, on the water industry. Um, and we will have a lengthy discussion about uh, water industry and the uh, current situation, how we can improve the lives of people due to like a better water management. Uh, as always, the conversation will take around 40-45 minutes. We will have a session for Q&A, however, as recently we did many times, you can also schedule a call with Alexandra. So we will give you her contact details and we will allow you to make an appointment if you have like a specific details to discuss. And I would encourage you to do so because of course we can't cover everything today. The, the topic is very heavy. Um, so uh, please enjoy and uh, please write any questions that you might have on the chat that you see on the right. So Alexandra, it's very nice to have you here. Hello. Uh, could you introduce yourself to the audience? Yes. Hello. Good morning, everyone. And um, thanks, Piotr, and thanks for having me today here. Um, I'm Alexandra Erwenich and uh, the director of uh, water industry in our factory automation EMEA organization. And I've been with Mitsubishi Electric for quite a while, as you know. And since about 12 years, uh, I've been responsible for our water activities in terms of automation solutions. <clears throat> and I must say, um, water was and uh, still is my passion. Yeah? I mean, what is more important than water? And um, as uh, well, water is the driver of nature, as Leonardo da Vinci already said more than 500 years ago. And not only of nature and life, which is already important enough, but um, Water is also a vital resource um, of economic development, of agriculture, of industry and the sustainability of communities. Mm. Yeah, and the sustainability topic is um, getting more and more importance for well, European countries, but also globally. Definitely. And uh, there are a couple of uh, areas where uh, we can make uh, society sustainable. Uh, water being one of them, definitely. So could you tell me um, how water treatment uh, plays a role in sustainability efforts? Yes. Um, the water industry is not only from a business perspective, a very interesting and growing market. Uh, it also goes perfectly with uh, companies' in, uh, sustainability initiatives. Like in our case, um, the respect for nature and protection of environment and uh, of uh, our precious resources um, um, uh, are very important cornerstones of our um, company management strategy and uh, firmly anchored in our um, corporate policy, not only as a corporate mission, but also as a business model. Uh, because acting sustainably and still deriving uh, business and, 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 and economic growth from it, it's not a contradiction. And our factory automation uh, systems division is particularly supporting and uh, co-innovating with industry and infrastructure customers um, and can really significantly help to improve and streamline not only manufacturing tasks, but also vitally important um, processes such as water treatment. And by the way, if you know uh, Japan a little bit and, and you know uh, Japan very well because you lived there for quite a while, um, you probably know that uh, it's a country that is relatively poor in raw materials. And therefore, historically, the aim has always been to use existing or expensively purchased um, resources as efficiently as possible. Yeah? And as a giant in the Japanese electronic uh, industry, uh, energy saving and overall um, efficiency in general are virtually part of our DNA and uh, is on principle reflected in our products and solutions. And efficiency does not only make economic sense, but uh, it also has less impact on the environment, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, we always try to mm. use this kind mm. of uh, Japanese experience because, mm. as you said, they, they are put in a quite challenging position when it, uh, uh, when it comes to resources and right. so on. Um, so I guess we will discuss this uh, quite a lot uh, yeah. today. However, maybe let's set the picture first and maybe let's talk uh, about the European uh, perspective. 
So uh, when it comes to European or EMEA mm. uh, market that we are both responsible for, yes. uh, what is the current status of the water mm. industry? Absolutely. I mean, we still tend to take unrestricted access to fresh water for granted, uh, at least in regions like here in Europe, apart from the south, maybe. Uh, we are not used to water scarcity. However, the, the picture is deceptive. Yeah, climate change and urbanization in particular are putting enormous pressure uh, on natural resources, predominantly water, plus, uh, plus uh, socio-political and uh, security issues. And uh, water utilities across the globe face very similar challenges. Um, I recently read a list of uh, the top ranked uh, issues facing the water sector identified by the American Water Works Association. Uh, and this is a list of top 20 in words. 20 uh, challenges ranging from aging infrastructure, uh, long-term drinking water availability over regulatory compliance, uh, cybersecurity issues, labor shortage, energy saving and cost recovery. <clears throat> now that's quite a list, isn't it? And it's uh, valid in all other regions of the world too. Yeah? And that means uh, new and resilient solutions must be found. Yeah, For sure, not all is uh, challenges can be solved by technology or even artificial intelligence. But, um, and, and some problems are simply of an organizational or political nature. However, there is a great opportunity um, to respond to challenges in the water management by effective use of intelligent technologies. Yeah, I mean, uh, one of uh, the reasons I have this podcast is always to discuss specifically how technology can support mm. us because of course there there are policies and there are um, initiatives that can be done however um, we see all the time how technology can completely reshape the way how we approach right. uh, businesses um, so that's uh, very interesting <coughs> and uh, maybe let's discuss how what kind of future do you see uh, when it comes to, to the industry. And uh, usually we, we try to discuss the major trends and drivers mm. that are defining this kind of um, changes, uh, the defining the future. So um, using your experience, could you uh, give me your outlook on the trends and drivers shaping the industry? Yes. Um, first of all, we have to state that the water industry is going through a phase of fundamental change. Huh? And this is primarily uh, due to external factors, the effect of which water companies uh, have to manage. Um, climate change, water scarcity and uh, conflicts over water are evident and water becomes increasingly important also at the political level yeah for example uh, since almost one year we have in in germany we have a, a national water strategy for germany in place or a couple of years ago the uk have issued a 2050 uh, water in in uh, uk water innovation strategy this we have had that in the past that's very new so why water is becoming so important not only because it is a vital resource and a basic prerequisite for all life on Earth, but also because we f increasingly feel um, that this resource is no longer available to us in unlimited um, quantities. Yeah? And we see more and more conflicting uh, interests between the supply of the people, of the population, and the water needs of the industry. And not only in arid zones like Africa, but also here in Central Europe. Yeah? And the problem is, without efficient public water management, there would be no residential areas, there would be no commercial areas, there would be no industry, no growth. Huh? And on the other hand, we do not only have water scarcity, but also heavy rainfall incidents, flooding, pollution of the water sources. And at the same time, we're facing also rising energy cost, um, the need for decarbonization, reduction of chemicals, uh, we have aging infrastructures, aging workforces, and an overall labor shortage, like in, in many other sectors too. Operational and maintenance costs are an issue. Uh, water treatment plants are under greater pressure than ever uh, to ensure smooth operations and being cost efficient at the same time. Cybersecurity is a very important issue. And last but not least, water companies have to provide more and more information. Yeah, If you consider that wastewater is not just, just a sort of waste, but also a source of valuable information, um, 
for instance, COVID and other pathogens, micropollutants and so on. And there's a European um, request, uh, request from the European Union to cities with more than 150,000 inhabitants to have wastewater monitoring systems. Yeah? That means water companies have to provide and archive more and more information. And this is impossible to manage with traditional methods and, and uh, techniques. Yeah? So <clears throat> we have a mixture of uh, technological uh, shifts and uh, definitely uh, climate change is a very important uh, topic because uh, we used to say, I mean, uh, when I was in school, we used to say that uh, Europe has this kind of moderate climate, right? Mm, so it's mm. just a perfect mm. climate uh, for, for life, uh, for people. However, it is not so moderate anymore, right? No. Like you said, uh, we see this kind of floods more, more and more often, even like uh, in Germany, this happens. It, it didn't used to happen, right? Not really. Um, so, so, so definitely uh, there is a lot of uh, things going on. Um, and uh, of course, this is a technological podcast. So uh, we are talking about uh, how technology can um, mm. improve mm. Um, on this situation. Mm. Um, however, of course, we want to address not only uh, issues related to, as you mentioned, cybersecurity, mm. but also, uh, okay, so we are in this situation, we have the climate change, mm -hmm. we will see more and more this kind of distur disturbing situations, mm. uh, but we try to claim that uh, technology can somehow save us, or at least help us to, uh, to uh, survive in this current situation. And uh, when we are talking about the manufacturing industry, uh, so the standard discrete manufacturing industry, usually uh, the answer uh, that we are giving is uh, revolving around digitalization in general. Yes. Um, so uh, somehow making the use of data and uh, uh, either through data analytics or even for uh, through better uh, data visibility. Um, so maybe we can discuss this point. So how can water utilities benefit from uh, technologies uh, around mm. digitalization? I, I think that uh, you might uh, have some uh, experience already. Uh, I know that you're working with uh, big uh, water utilities uh, <coughs> and usually what you guys are doing there is, um, well, implementing digitaliz digitalization. So maybe let's start how digi di digitalization can help and uh, right. we will move from yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, we, we need to think uh, of water management in a more integrative way and uh, we need future-proof strategies and water management needs to become smarter and needs digital transformation too. And water is becoming a data-driven sector uh, industry as well. And summarizing the actual task of a water utility, uh, we are talking about optimizing the system operation, manage more and more information, streamline processes and uh, the customer services, reduce energy consumption, CO2 emissions and cost. And of course, modern, modern water management has been deploying a high degree of automation already uh, since long time. And um, in the last couple of years, we see uh, more and more intelligent equipment solutions for us to optimize the pump, uh, pump, pump operation or aeration control. We see smart sensors, preventative maintenance and so on. Nevertheless, in view of the manifold change, uh, challenges the water sector is facing nowadays, we need to uh, now to move uh, to the next level to make water management future-proof. And this level is the digital transformation. And digitalization is about being able to harness data and uh, to make data-driven decisions uh, to improve processes. Data-driven decisions and an integrative uh, or integrated view of the complete operational area. Yeah? Um, and that's what we call situational awareness. And uh, one of our customers in the UK, which is Scottish Water, um, they define it like this, being able to understand the current environment and to accurately anticipate future problems to enable effective uh, actions. And in fact, that means going from reactive to proactive, uh, to intelligent control, to greater links between cause and effect and the integration between incident and response. And the key aims associate, associated with uh, situational awareness are to prevent an issue, 
before it becomes an event. And that mitigates risk dramatically. Mm -hmm. yeah? And to ensure the capability to link various sources of business intelligence, um, even from completely disparate data, yeah? such as telemetry or customer information, weather, GIS data, um, workflow activity data, and many more. Mm? Mm -hmm. So if I, if I understand this uh, correctly, um, <coughs> so of course, they were types of improvements that could be done here and there, as you said, maybe a pump improvements and then um, maybe a type of, uh, uh, you know, improving uh, specific challenges that uh, the companies had. But what we are talking here about is to have a total picture for the company. And for uh, with the water utilities, my understanding is that they are huge, right? Yes. They have many facilities, yes. many different places. Absolutely. And uh, managing all of this with, let's say, one source of data, source of information might not be that easy. Mm. Uh, but uh, let's maybe discuss a little bit the uh, commercial benefits mm. of this, um, because um, of course, we are also <laughs> in the job of doing business. Uh, so, so maybe you could give us, uh, again, your experience uh, with Scottish Water and other companies. What are the commercial benefits of uh, uh, implementing digitalization? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are not only uh, business benefits for um, us, but also, of course, for the utilities. And uh, first of all, I would like to mention the um, regulatory perform, uh, yeah, the benefits on regulatory performance, mm -hmm. because this helps the utility, uh, for instance, to uh, reduce uh, penalties or fines. Yeah, and the commercial um, benefits are that they can. One example is that they can now um, prioritize tasks based on the financial uh, implications to the company. Um, and they can reduce business cost significantly. For instance, by reducing the out of hour working um, times and, and uh, night call outs, which are very expensive. Um, they can filter alarms according to priority and uh, priorities and, and concentrate on the really important ones first. Yeah. That means you have an overall optimization of planned work. And this also drives labor efficiencies. Yeah, um, it gives more efficient use of existing personnel and and a knowledge transfer, which is so important also to compensate um, the skilled labor shortage. Mm -hmm. And um, they can anticipate and preventatively respond, for instance, to um, weather uh, conditions. Um, different sites and business units um, can be managed effectively. What, what you just mentioned, yeah. Um, there is a big potential to identify energy reduction and by having clear management dashboards on quality issues, KPIs, trends and so on, um, the overall uh, operational area can be managed much, much more efficiently. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it all sounds like because of the way how you are efficiently using data, mm. you have the higher control mm. on your operations and because of the control, you are able to do the business more effic uh, efficiently. Correct, right? yes. So this is, um, I think, uh, that the logic behind it and let's say the reason for investing in uh, digital technologies w which some, <coughs> they don't have to be uh, that, that easy to implement. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually maybe we can discuss this point about uh, how easy it is or how difficult it is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, using a little bit of your experience, uh, maybe we could discuss uh, kind of like a successful roadmap for the digitalization mm. project. Mm. Um, of course, focusing on water. Mm. I think there are things to learn also for manufacturing, but uh, focusing on the process automation in the water treatment applications. Yeah. So uh, what is the roadmap for successful digitalization project in mm. this business? Mm. In fact, there are many similarities uh, or parallels also with manufacturing or industri industrial applications. And so often in life, uh, you need a plan, a strategy, and above all, a clear goal in mind. Yeah, Just buying a piece of software and uh, collecting any and all data and uh, expecting that the system will simply do the job, that will not work. 
Uh, um, so successful digitalization requires a solid foundation and uh, you need to set your targets. So that means which issues uh, you would like to, or should be addressed first and solved. And then you need to, col to collect the relevant data, yeah, even from very disparate sources. Um, and as far as we are concerned, our software platforms are built uh, around universal connectivity. Yeah? And um, this allows us to bring together data from all popular automation systems from IT and IIoT systems. It makes it much more easier. Then you need to analyze these data and to create diagnostic rules. Yeah? If you want, you can even implement machine learning or even artificial intelligence. Um, and then you can uh, run online diagnosis and run diagnostic systems or simply let the system optimize your process directly if you feel confident with that. And um, the diagnosis and analysis on the edge level or via digital twins, for example, this really helps to gain this confidence yeah? and uh, without disturbing your process because there's no interference in a very critical process like water treatment. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, um, your team should be on board because uh, digitalization often involves um, a shift of mindset and skills. So training and open communication can help to, uh, to, to, to proceed with the transition. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, <clears throat> it sounds uh, familiar uh, because we, we had a couple of uh, conversations about this already. Um, particularly, we discussed uh, Artificial, inter, in, uh, artificial intelligence impact of <coughs> on the industry, on the manufacturing especially. And uh, this flow that you just explained is exactly how our experts on mm -hmm. AI are uh, recommending. Yeah? So um, having a clear plan and starting from there, yes. um, collecting the relevant data. And I think this, this, this point is especially uh, challenging to some of the organizations because um, these days with proper IT systems, it's relatively easy mm. to collect a lot of data. Yeah? Sure. But making it relevant is the challenge, I, mm. I guess. Um, so again, I think that uh, by the definition of the right goal, you can then think about collecting the right data. Yeah? Because the, the sources of data are, are there, I guess. I mean, even in uh, uh, companies that are, you know, established for 20, 30 years, they have the data of course. out there, right? Yes, right. But the point is to, well, it's too much data, right? Mm. So the point is to collect the, the one that matters. Yeah? Correct, yes. And that's, uh, that's what you <coughs> do uh, through software, solutions and, uh, you know, m m filtering the information from, from the field and so on. Um, <coughs> so it is very, very similar to what we try to do also in the manufacturing industry. However, well, uh, if it's so simple, <laughs> so why, why, why not everyone is doing this? So um, maybe we could elaborate a little bit on the barriers. Why uh, some companies who might have resources mm who might have some experience with collecting, managing and using data, mm. why do they hesitate uh, with uh, implementations of, of this kind of uh, systems or why they try, but they fail? Mm. So maybe could you elaborate on the barriers? Mm. So true, yes. There are uh, barriers to overcome and uh, I would just like to concentrate on, on maybe three. Um, one of those barriers is cybersecurity as an example. Yeah, if you look at some of the statistics and I remember a survey from, from the UK, um, they will tell you that uh, around 45% and I think in the, this was an example from the manufacturing industry and uh, I think for critical infrastructure it's even more. Um, that around 45% of the companies are not investing into digitalization through fear of cybersecurity breaches. Now that's quite staggering, isn't it? And another concern is um, that with the digital transformation, water utilities may think that everything needs to be renewed and uh, all existing equipment becomes obsolete. But the opposite is true, at least in our approach. Yeah? Our philosophy is to integrate uh, existing systems and automation components as much as possible. So our motto is make use of what is there. Yeah? And um, of course, we have all the technologies uh, to equip water management systems. Yeah? But the reality is that the majority of the projects are not greenfield projects. And uh, unless the equipment is already obsolete, 
uh, it's more economical to build on what is what already exists and to integrate it. And ultimately, uh, for many people, it's still difficult to grasp uh, exactly what the benefits of digitalization are and how it can contribute to make the industry future proof and how to start. Yeah? And um, again, a few figures, um, the majority of the industrial uh, companies, and, and it's really the majority, I think it's about 90%, mm -hmm. uh, they confirm the importance of digitalization or industry 4.0. Uh, however, only 12 or maybe maximum 20% um, have already implemented a dedicated strategy for that. So what are the reasons? Uh, that's a really interesting figure. Um, the reasons are financial resources, secondly, a lack of skilled personnel, and also simply um, shying away from the complexity uh, of this topic. Although data harvesting um, is not new, it's been something uh, which has been existing for many years. Um, however, harvesting data as much as you can, but then doing nothing with that, it doesn't make sense, right? And um, what is new now is that now we have more advanced technologies at hand and, and data science is key here. Yeah, The use of statistical methods and, and uh, AI to take that data, to contextualize it, analyze it, and from that provide information back into your uh, operation uh, that they can make data uh, based decisions and so on. That's the core change at, that's leading to successful digitalization. Mm -hmm. And the risk of not innovating is very high. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. And maybe we can stay on this topic for a while because uh, there are some <coughs> interesting insights that you just mentioned. Mm. So, for example, uh, you said that uh, the cybersecurity is a huge topic and mm. it seems a major issue. And then again, we are talking about a lot of existing elder infrastructure. And I would assume that uh, having this kind of obsolete systems is a threat from the cybersecurity perspective, right? Sure. I mean, uh, these days, modern uh, technologies, modern software, they, they, they provide this kind of uh, cybersecurity uh, measures. Mm -hmm. uh, some some <laughs> products, some components they have these built-in features inside mm. that mm. Uh, allow you to manage the cybersecurity better. Yeah. So for me, this this barrier sound, sounds a bit strange. Yeah. Because uh, of course, um, you know, if you are worried about the cybersecurity, you should be worried about the existing infrastructure, absolutely. not the new one. Absolutely. Would you agree? <laughs> Correct. Yes. Absolutely. So, so I think that there are some uh, some mental barriers uh, um, here and. Uh, uh, this kind of uh, lack of uh, strategy and uh, lack of understanding maybe how, how you can actually do it well is the, the, the real problem, the main problem. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, because, because, because for sure the, the newer the equipment, um, the, the better is the, uh, and the easier is, it is to uh, manage cybersecurity problems. But okay, I, I think that uh, Th there are things to explore here, uh, because if, uh, you, again, you mentioned a very important point that you don't have to replace everything at once, right? So, um, implementing digitalization and modern systems doesn't mean that you have to change all the infrastructure, data, let's say, uh, data infrastructure, if I, I don't have a better word for it, uh, you don't have to do it. You can true, yes. start small. So maybe that, that is something that, that we should discuss in detail, uh, particularly about the framework that you would use mm -hmm. to start small mm -hmm. with the, the digitalization project mm -hmm. and expand from it. Um, so uh, using experience with the customers that, that we work with, uh, what, how does this framework look like? Yes, um, our philosophy is that we try to um, to help the, the utilities to make it as easy as possible. And one of the advantages of a company like ours is the fact that we are very familiar with both levels. As a worldwide manufacturer with many, many own factories, I think we have more than 200, uh, we do know perfectly the plant and OT level. Yeah, That's where we actually bring our automation platform technologies to perfection. And this is a platform that forms 
the basis of any process, whether it's a manufacturing task or a process like water treatment. And that's also the level where you typically harvest data from. Yeah? But we also know very well the enterprise level and what to do with the data. With that data yeah? And that's how we created our own digital transformation and even our own proprietary AI. Mm -hmm. yeah? And yes, I mentioned already some of our approaches like universal connectivity or the integration of existing uh, equipment. However, in my opinion, um, the most valuable con contribution that we can support our customers with on their um, digital journey is again related uh, somehow to our Japanese background. And uh, that's what we call SMKL. SMKL stands for Smart Manufacturing Kaizen Level, or as I like to say, if I speak about water or the process industry, Smart Water or Smart Process Kaizen Level. Kaizen in Japanese uh, means actually um, change for the better. And that's, by the way, nothing else than in our logo, changes for the better, you know, our, uh, our company claim, actually. The Kaizen approach itself is not new. It's, uh, in fact, a very well established and proven method, which was first practiced in Japan after World War II, and most notably as the Toyota story. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the concept is somehow part of, again, part of our Japanese DNA and um, so valid that and applicable today. Um, how does that work? I mean, instead of tackling a huge challenge as a whole, you segment it into small individual steps, which are then incrementally addressed and optimized. And this is not only psychologically and financially easier, uh, but it also minimizes the risk, which is always inherent to any project, right? And SMKL uh, is a framework driven by data that understands what's happening in your process and it identifies issues, helps to improve them and supports you to make the right decisions to maximize your profitability. Because if you don't know the scale and the cost of a project, how can you make the right investment decision, right? And this Kaizen approach is also perfect for the water industry as well, yeah, as it guides the utilities through the digital transformation process that exactly fits their business requirements step by step. Actually, um, um, maybe we can discuss this uh, a little further uh, because I have mm. a feeling that SMKL mm. has a bit complicated name. <laughs> it's a, mm. Let's say uh, a translation from Japanese, so um, uh, Smart Manufacturing Kaizen Level yes. is a long name, I'd say. Uh, but essentially what it is, is a framework where, first of all, you identify where you are. Correct. So how mature your organization is in terms of using data, yes. how mature your organization is when it comes to the management mm -hmm. of, of uh, let's say, processes. And this allows you to identify the best strategies to move forward. Because if you are uh, a company that still doesn't use uh, the right data, then it's a different strategy you will implement than someone who already has the full visibility, for example, of the supply chain. Yeah. So uh, I think that the, the one of the main issues that we face is that there are different strategies that you can use, but first you need to identify which strategy is the best for you, right? So true. So yes. to be able to do so, uh, SMKL allows you to identify your position, so to say. And it, it doesn't mean that there is something wrong with your company that you are just starting, right? Correct. It's just by identifying and, you know, like uh, facing the truth, um, you, you can identify where you are and then you can move more efficiently mm -hmm. instead of just implementing something because there is something to implement, right? Right, exactly. And I, I, I like the example of AI mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, buzzwords uh, around AI these days, but AI is not the best solution for companies that don't have the data collected properly yet. Yeah? Correct. Because to, to use AI efficiently, you need to have uh, proper data first, right? Um, so, so this is a very typical example. And I think that the SMKL uh, is, a, uh, in my opinion, the best framework to start with because it's very simple to implement. Right. You, you just answer a couple of questions and then uh, you know at least where, where you stand. So and, true, yes. Yeah. Mm. So that's, um, mm, we already know that um, for successful digitalization project, we need like a framework and the framework <coughs> uh, is SMKL in mm. essence. Mm. So uh, maybe let's discuss an example, mm -hmm. a customer story, mm. if uh, we could, 
and uh, you mentioned Scottish water a couple of times, so maybe you could uh, tell us how this uh, looked like at their sites. Yes. Yeah, um, this is a company that has made this um, uh, journey with us and still continues. Um, and this is Scotland's publicly owned uh, water supplier, Scottish Water. They started this journey uh, already about, I think, 10 years ago, or maybe even longer, um, when they were looking uh, for a solution providing an integrated view of asset performance, of the customer contacts, work activity, and this across their entire network with many, many different automation systems deployed and many different data sources. Yeah, And at that time, they had three aims. First of all, they wanted to improve the speed to identify business risks, especially those uh, impacting on customers. Secondly, they wanted to create business intelligence uh, and link data sources uh, from their telemetry, SCADA, um, customer calls, GIS or weather data uh, or workflow systems. And last but not least, they wanted to build a future-proof system that could be developed further. And uh, what is the solution? Um, the solution is a system providing real-time, and this is important, real-time asset management dashboards clear business rules and an advanced uh, alarm logic again in real time yeah because many other systems do it a couple of hours or days later but this is really real time an open integration by utilizing uh, the existing systems which i already mentioned before and it is a very iot friendly system um, that means scottish water they have a solution that can be developed further even in house later mm -hmm. yeah? and the benefits the customer has is exactly what they wanted to have ex in improved speed of uh, identifying business risks uh, improved response times they can for instance now uh, position uh, or geographically position engineers into specific uh, flooding hotspots if in, in case of these uh, incidents based on live telemetry data alarms and weather predictions so that means they are able to proactively respond to scenarios yeah and they have a complete real-time overview um, of their entire operations. So every data source is available in the control room within a couple of clicks and without needing uh, um, uh, the need to be an IT uh, or data scientist, uh, science expert. Yeah? And they have a definitely a future-proof system they can rely on. And this overarching um, situational awareness concept, utilizing existing systems, not replacing them, turning disparate data into meaningful um, information this all, all this um, has allowed Scottish Water not only to respond more quickly and uh, more effectively to the need of, <coughs> needs of their customers, but it's given them also the ability uh, to proactively respond to scenarios where their assets or customers may have been um, affected in a very negative way. And the financial savings, they are dramatic. I mean, over the couple of years um, they use the system, they realize the saving really multi uh, multi-million saving and i'm talking about several million british pounds yeah that's 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 a real interesting figure at the end it's an evolutionary process and there are upcoming plans to integrate more uh, systems and to add further intelligence to the system and this is exactly the advantage of solutions uh, which are modular and scalable and can grow with the client mm -hmm. <clears throat> as uh, when it comes to scottish water is mm. there journey finished now no 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 not at all they they as i said they continue and they develop the system further adding more intelligence more systems um, the more systems you you implement uh, the better your knowledge of your operation is and and uh, yeah the more information you more or the better you know what is going on in your area yeah and scottish water they um had when they started they had to unify four different uh, areas the north the south the west and the east and uh, these were totally different companies we can say with totally different equipments and that was a hard time to integrate everything and really to control everything and to have one view from one control room um, mm. and that's what they realized mm. and I, I think this is important because i think that the, the data mm. unifies us a little bit so um mm. you, you might have different equipments and mm. different cult company cultures and so on True. but at the end if if you if you make the data available uh, you can understand it okay uh alexander that was very interesting i enjoyed this conversation a lot especially 
because <laughs> this is about process automation, mm. which is um, a little bit different from manufacturing, but in the same time, not that different. No, so true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, in a couple of uh, uh, s summary words and maybe uh, giving you an outlook uh, to the future seminars. Um, we are now um, uh, trying to cover this kind of uh, topics around sustainability. Uh, we started with water because, as Alexander mentioned, well, there is no life without water. Um, the next seminar uh, next month is going to be about the energy, uh, electrical and not only and how to save it, especially in days like today, uh, which are, uh, let's say, not the easiest uh, in the last uh, couple of decades. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this conversation. As I said, there is much more to come. Um, and we will uh, answer a couple of questions now. Uh, again, I will repeat, you can always uh, reach out to Alexandra. We will give you her email address. Maybe we can show it on the screen now. Um, and then um, if you have any very detailed questions that probably we can't answer in 20 minutes that we have left, then please reach out to her. Uh, she promised she <coughs> will spare some time to, yes. to answer. Sure. Um, so yeah, you, you see the email of uh, Alessandra. And uh, at any case, um, uh, let us know in case of uh, any more detailed questions and maybe we can also share uh, some of these customer uh, experiences uh, with you as much as we can. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, some questions because there are some on the uh, Q and A uh, chat. So just so you know, there is a, a general chat and there is also Q and A only. Um, and this <coughs> is where I will be trying to to read some of them. Um, there is a question about the certificate of, uh, of the um, attendance. Uh, we can arrange something like that if this is necessary, but please uh, try to uh, reach out to us for this specifically uh, over the email. Um, so, so you will not get like an automatic uh, certificate, but if you, if you need one, uh, we will provide uh, something for you. Um, <clears throat> but there is a very interesting question uh, around the sustainability. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question is about uh, sustainability of implementing these technologies, in fact. Uh, so the one thing is the, the industry itself and how you um, solve problems with, for example, water treatment. But mm -hmm. how do you assess whether technology is itself is sustainable? And I think this is a very interesting question. Um, and I think this all comes to whether it pays off for itself, right? So um, are you investing in, for example, data collection infrastructure just to have something more, <laughs> some addition, or are you actually using it to improve, right? So as long as uh, the technology improves yes. your process, right. it is sustainable. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we, we are not doing uh, this for, for the sake of data. What I said, just, just to collect any and all data and then um, uh, not having a, a real benefit uh, and uh, move towards sustainability and operational efficiency. Uh, that makes no sense. Yeah. Of course, the solutions have, have always to serve the client and, and the operation of the utility to make the process more, um, yeah, resilient and more sustainable and future proof. Of course. I think that uh, <coughs> uh, even more generally, um, I think that everything that is digital, uh, well, somehow it is more sustainable than uh, whatever we used in the past. Mm. So any type of, you know, analog systems, uh, they used to be uh, expensive and they used to be uh, costly when it comes to maintenance. Yes. But these days, uh, and I think this comes from your, your explanation, everything, uh, revolves around data. Yeah? Mm. And data, uh, storage of data is not that expensive anymore, right? So, of course, mm. there are considerations in terms of sustainability of data centers. And mm. by the way, we discussed this mm. uh, previously. Um, <coughs> but generally speaking, uh, having the data and acting on it uh, definitely improves uh, sustainability efforts in yes. most organizations that we know, I guess. Yeah. yeah, and it also improves uh, very much the operational efficiency and uh, to operate mechanical systems, you need a very skilled personnel. 
which normally the water utilities always had in the past. But this is a generation which is going to, to retire now and you do not have these skilled uh, workers. Uh, okay, of course you have it, but, but not as much or as many as you need. So these digital systems, they help to, first of all, to transfer the knowledge from the experienced generation to new guys and also um, to to make sure that, that the pro process is always on the same um, same level and has always the same quality. And this is uh, so helpful, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Um, the next question, uh, also very interesting, um, uh, is about the COVID pandemic. Mm. So COVID was a major disturbance uh, in for many economies. So how that, how did uh, COVID uh, affected the roadmap for digitalization of the water sector? Very interesting question. Absolutely, yes, it is. Um, well, of course, uh, COVID has always has also prevented water utilities to um, to implement new projects and so on, simply because many of the utilities were simply closed for security reasons. Nevertheless, the pandemic has on the contrary, really gave a booster to digitalization because we saw that that uh, if, if, if people are not an available enough and um, um, the, the utilities cannot, um, uh, yeah, you cannot enter into the to the to the plants and so on. It's so helpful to have a system which still w continues to work. And um, as I also mentioned, there are um, also opportunities to use um, um, to, uh, to, to identify the water quality, for instance, or to get information from the water or wastewater about the situation of, of pathogens. It's not only COVID, but also other microbes uh, or micropollutants and so on. So digitalization gives really a good um, support to um, yeah, to identify those things and uh, yeah, I mm -hmm. think it has really given a booster. Yeah, I remember mm -hmm. um, <coughs> especially uh, uh, when it came to pandemic, um, there was this issue of having healthy personnel yeah, right. on site. Exactly. So I know about situations where like people were actually sleeping and living inside of the utility Isolated. Uh, place, isolated. Yes. Right. So that they, they, they could manage this critical infrastructure like sure. uh, energy, water and so on. Yeah. And I think that this also um, uh, basically uh, affects this remote type of access mm. to facilities so that you, you don't necessarily need to be there to be able to uh, commission new new machines, for example, or to uh, understand the error problems and maybe solve it remotely. So this was another trend uh, that we have seen that was caused by the pandemic. So this kind of remote access to 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 your utilities Absolutely. machines and so on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, there are more and more questions coming. <laughs> uh, I, I lost the track. Uh, yeah, but it's a good sign. <laughs> yes. Um, so the, the question is, uh, the next one is, how do you digitalize water? <laughs> and I think our point is here that um, we want to digitalize the processes around water. Treatment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Water will always be somehow yeah, liquid, liquid. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. True. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is a question uh, considering uh, Mitsubishi Electric, I assume, dedicated team for water sector. Um, so I guess the question is uh, how many people do we have? Or I'm not sure if, if the question is very not very precise. But yeah, I don't know from where it comes. But mm -hmm. <laughs> now we have uh, colleagues all over uh, the EMEA region uh, who are supporting uh, the uh, the water industry, um, and um, yeah, I'm just uh, supporting the activities from our headquarter mm -hmm. uh, with our team. And uh, yeah, but again, we have many, many colleagues all over the EMEA region, our regional sales teams uh, with uh, who work uh, together with us. And uh, we have many, many water projects all over the EMEA region. And for sure, like water <coughs> uh, treatment plants usually require 
uh, to have this kind of dedicated support, right? So, Absolutely, yes. Uh, and yeah. depends on the project. I mean, we uh, are able to support uh, the utilities from a single component up to a complete uh, project. Yeah, we also have our own project house uh, who are, for instance, um, um, uh, responsible for our DCS system, this, which is a complex project, or, or for complete uh, electrical parts of, of water, wastewater or desalination plants. So, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. The next question is around cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's a general question uh, whether we could, let's say, briefly discuss cybersecurity in the water sector. And honestly, I am getting this question very, very often when it comes to, like when we do the podcast, um, there is a lot of questions uh, like how to manage this. And uh, I promise that we will have a dedicated session on the cybersecurity. Um, it takes me to uh, some time because I have a queue of, of speakers, <laughs> let's say. Um, but I want to do a dedicated session about uh, cybersecurity. But I guess the main point is uh, there are not that many things that are w where cybersecurity is so important as water utilities, right? Because uh, we are talking here about the critical infrastructure, which is so important for every country that uh, cybersecurity is, as you probably, you, you mentioned, it's yes, the number absolutely. one priority. Yeah? yeah, absolutely. I mean, for critical infrastructure such as water or energy plants, um, there are even more strict um, uh, regulations and and uh, y you even look um, you look even deeper into this or uh, onto this topic uh, than in any any other industry, and uh, okay, I cannot. Uh, um, as I said, you this is a topic which will fill a complete podcast, but I can just um, um, say one thing is very important: cybersecurity is never related just to a device or to a single machine or whatsoever. It's a very complex topic, and you have to uh, watch it from several angles. It's of course, on the device level, we and many other component manufacturers do whatever is possible to make our devices safe. But then it comes to the machine or equipment network or to the system security, which you have to watch it. Then it is simply a physical aspect yeah, that no, not any uh, unauthorized personnel can enter into your um, uh, assets or of your plant. And at the end of the day, uh, which is quite or in most of the cases, the, the, the difficult thing is the human perspective. Yeah. The people have to be trained not to, um, yeah, it, to follow the regulation that to have, to have the right authorizations and all these things. So it's a very, very complex topic. And it I'm really is. looking all forward yeah. uh, to, to that podcast. <clears throat> I need as to, well. I need to look into this because, um, mm, yeah, there is, there is so mm. many things that are involved because sometimes we focus, um, mm, again, sometimes maybe too much on mm. the technology mm. itself. So we, we, we think about um, how to make uh, controllers secure, how to uh, secure the industrial networking and so on. Industrial also uh, office networking. True. Uh, but this is only a part of the picture. So, um, for example, this uh, people factor is also crucial. And uh, it's actually a part of the whole holistic approach to, to cybersecurity. So, OK, yes. uh, I will try to, to organize a special dedicated podcast about the cybersecurity awesome. uh, topic. Um, okay. Um, I am losing track of the questions. There's so many of them, uh, but I will uh, ask, I guess, the next one, which is a bit detailed, whether this digital integration uh, is uh, possible for um, these chemical and microbiological parameters, or it also includes things like microplastic. And I think that um, the, this topic is um, not so much um, uh, affecting the dig digitalization systems itself. Mm, mm. It's about the sensors, right? Right, right. Which, or the analysis, yeah. the sample analysis uh, of the water. Right. Then if you have the results, of course, you can uh, integrate it into the overall system that you always know what is going on. But this is a very specific technology you have right. to uh, address first. Yeah. However, it's at the end, it comes to the uh, availability of data. So yes, if you're sure. able to do the sampling Correct. for the microplastics, yes. right. you have the data <clears throat> in your system. And then you can manage this in the same way as any other pathogens that uh, are nowadays uh, 
possible to do. Absolutely, yeah? yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> what are the challenges this year in the face of the El Nino? <laughs> I, I think this question is maybe not to you. <laughs> but I um, mean, with all the digitalization, we cannot change the, the climate directly. Mm -hmm. No, but um, if, uh, yeah, of course we can uh, um, help to, as I said, with, with um, uh, live data and and uh, very precise weather uh, forecasts and so on we can give an early warning which is very important we cannot change the phenomenon but um, we can help the utilities and and the people at the end of the day uh, to save uh, and to protect properties and yeah well, this is another very important point uh, that you mentioned is uh, the weather data of course there are some uh, weather predictions that are available, but they are usually disconnected from your uh, system Correct. of your facility. Correct. And being able to connect this and act on uh, the weather data yeah. is a game changer as well in this Absolutely. industry, right? Yes. I mean, mm. if you remember the horrible floods we had in Germany three years ago, mm -hmm. in, or in summer 21, um, each uh, ministry or utilities, you have a proper weather data. Each airport has a very, very sophisticated weather uh, system. Um, but if no one is able to uh, use this data and to, to have the, the right information at the right time to the right person, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And this is what I mentioned. It's so important to have or to integrate the right systems, also expensive GIS systems. What, what is the value if, if, if it's not connected, if it's just an isolated information? Yeah. So you need to integrate it and all the information together gives you the meaningful, um, information at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, um, that, that is one consideration. So, uh, having this weather data, weather forecasting somehow interconnected with your operations. That yes. is one thing. But there is actually another point uh, which um, where we can use the Japanese experience. Mm. So they have this early warning systems around uh, tsunami yeah. waves. Yeah. And uh, I, as far as I know, there is uh, this AI that we, we have. Mm -hmm. uh, MySART is also used in this kind of early warning system, so they are analyzing a lot of parameters yes. to very early uh, understand whether the tsunami is coming or not. Correct. Yeah? Yes. And this is like a matter of life. Yeah. So if this this couple of seconds that you have Absolutely. changes a lot, and yeah. I, I think this 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 is something that probably could be replicated in other regions as well. Yeah? Sure. Very good. Uh, we still have a little bit of time. Uh, are there any process improvements that contribute to the uh, improvement of water quality? I think again, very detailed question because well, probably there is many. Yes. <clears throat> well, the answer, f the first answer is simply yes, but you need also, uh, it, it, such kind of information is, uh, or, or project, is a um, is a teamwork. It's not just uh, we we as an automation company. We cannot just solve that. Mm -hmm. This needs to be uh, done together with the utility, <coughs> with the experts in the process. We are not the experts in the process. We are the experts of uh, making the project uh, process digital and more efficient. Yeah, and uh, this is a teamwork, and you have to look deeply into um, the specific uh, task and then see how this can be optimized. At the end, uh, I think, uh, again, it's about analyzing the data. Absolutely, yes, mm. right, mm. yeah. If you have the right data, then you can uh, find ways to improve everything. Huh? Correct. But but okay, that's that's a very detailed topic because <laughs> at the end it's it's uh, to understand which parameters, mm. how do they affect each other. Mm. It's it's a it's a complex uh, topic, but uh, of course there are ways to do so sure. uh, as long as you have um, the information uh, in your uh, system. Yes. Thing. Okay, maybe one more if we have time. 
Oh, that is very detailed question, <laughs> Alex. Uh, I don't know what are the MBR membranes. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, this you is know. yes, but that's it, not not our business. Really, our this business, is so. uh, the the membrane uh, reactors. Yes. So what we try to do <clears throat> uh, here is to automate the processes, right. Right. and uh, here I guess this is something for real experts in in the yeah. water treatment. Yeah, so yeah. This is not something we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that uh, we need to end our uh, amazing conversation. Um, I don't think I've ever had so many questions, so I guess water is important, as you said. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and it has gone so quickly. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. it's very interesting. Uh, so if uh, you still have some uh, uh, unanswered questions, uh, please contact Alex directly. And uh, of course, we will try to uh, help you out with any doubt you might have. Uh, Thank you, Alexandra. It was a pleasure to have you here and hopefully you will join me again someday. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Jutra, and uh, thanks for the attendees also. Thank you. <laughs>